Roswell Flight Test Crew here. Today we're looking at the ESC and Goggles 1 sent to us from Banggood. Let's see what's inside the box. So, first let's just pop the lid here. And, oh, a bunch of stuff. So first we have the actual goggles themselves. What else we got there? That seems to be it. So we've got a user guide. This is an HDMI to mini HDMI cable, pretty handy. We have a couple of screen wipes here. This is a USB-A to micro-B cable. They refer to it as an Android cable. Next, of course, is a battery. Next, we have the antenna. This is linear polarized, and it's RPSMA. So I want to take a look at the construction of this unit to see how it compares to other ones I've used and kind of what it's about. So it's EPP foam, which is normal. So the foam on top you can see exposed here. And it's got this hard plastic shell. Looks like it may be vacuum form or something like that. Like right here, for example, on the head strap, there's a place for the battery to go right in the back. So that's pretty handy. And this is the wire for the battery. Of course, before you can use the goggles, you have to charge the batteries. Now, I was looking at these little batteries here and they are really slick. <laughs> if you're familiar with this type of a battery, this one's got a few little advantages. One, of course, is it's got a little meter. You can tell how charged it is, which is really handy. I can't tell you how many times I've taken a battery from my goggles and looked and go, is this charged or not? I don't know. And then I gotta find out. Secondly, it charges with a USB port. So I, how simple is that? That's awesome. No special chargers required. I have a little battery pack here. I can just plug it in. This battery, there we go, charging, is a 1600 milliamp battery at 7.4 volts. Its charge rate is about one amp at five volts. So as long as you can supply that from a computer or a battery or whatever, you're good to go. You've got all of your buttons on the right side here. So buttons, inputs, everything on the right hand side. So the first button we have here is the power button and frequency selection. So hold two to three seconds for turning it on and then hold again to change frequencies. Now it's completely automatic, which you may or may not like, but it's actually very handy for finding your frequency. We'll go over that in a minute. The next button over is your HDMI AV switch. Now in AV mode, you're receiving information from the antenna over 5.8 gigahertz. And on the HDMI mode, of course, the HDMI input. Next button is a menu button. You activate the menu, and then once in the menus, you can navigate with these plus and minus buttons. In the menu, we have backlight, brightness, contrast, volume, video type, NTSC or PAL, and back to backlight. One note about the brightness, actually, is I notice the brightness is, goes from extremely bright, the next notch down is sort of dark, then it goes all the way dark to off. Off could be a problem because you can't see the screen, of course, and you can't get back in there to see what's going on. It, it's very, very bright, though, plenty for outdoor use, especially since it cups your face. No problem there. And of course, these two little things over here, we have the top one, it's a little trap door here. Uh, that's the HDMI input. And of course, below that is a headphone output. If you're doing something which has audio through HDMI, you plug in headphones at the bottom, to listen to it basically and it works pretty good. The only other thing of note is that there is a small fan which is located as far as I can tell in this little vent here. It pulls air from the bottom straight through the top so it won't overheat in the sun because it is black and it'll get really hot I bet in the sun. Let's take a quick peek and see how the uh, battery attaches. Just plug it in. The antenna. Probably won't be using this stock antenna, I don't think, but there it is. Other things of note, it's got a uh, Fresnel lens in there, and as far as I could tell, it cannot be focused or moved, so it's a fixed focus on that one. Now, as far as the hardware specs are concerned in this thing, it's got a 40-channel, 5.8 gigahertz receiver that receives race band A, B, E, and F. So, all your frequencies are covered. Secondly, the, the shining star of this thing is this screen. It's a five inch, 1920 by 1080 resolution, full HD screen. I have never seen any pair of goggles with that much resolution. It's really quite amazing. So for this demo here, I've hooked up the goggles with an MHL adapter to a cell phone. I'm just playing back some YouTube video so we can see how good it looks. Now on 720p is a bit of overscan, but it's extremely clear. The only 
thing I can see in the video that could be a problem is a bit of chromatic aberration due to the Fresnel lens. But other than that, it's very, very clear, very bright, very just, it's, it's so sharp. It's so nice to do this, just watching the video through this versus my cell phone, huge, huge difference. Very low latency, I couldn't even detect a latency problem. I want to test to see how good the thing scans frequencies, how fast it works, how accurate it is. So I've got a little aircraft here, which has a built-in FPV rig. I'm going to power this thing up and give her a try. It's currently on, so I just press and hold the frequency button until it says let go. Once it does that, it'll start rolling through frequencies. And, oh, there it goes. <laughs> and there I am. Hello. There's no display that tells you what frequency you're currently on. It's completely automatic. That could be a good or a bad thing. The good thing is it sticks out the frequency, it locks on, it's nice and solid. The bad news is you have no idea what frequency you're on. So if you have a few friends flying around, you won't know that you're on your own frequency. The good news is if you power off and back on, it ends up right where it was. So it stays in the same frequency just for you. That's pretty handy. So we thought of some other uses for this. You're not flying your aircraft, like computer use and learning typing because you can't look down at your keyboard. Outdoor sports videography. Personal home theater while on an airplane. So one thing to point out is that you cannot focus this. So it is fixed focus, and if you wear glasses like I do, what my solution has been in the past and works really well now is to buy a cheap pair of glasses online in my prescription, pop the lenses out and just stick them in there, or pop the part of the frame out and stick it in there. It works really, really well. It's like gonna cost you 20, 30 bucks, maybe, <laughs> and that'll work. Let's go outside and see how it performs. All right, so I'm really looking forward to trying these goggles out for a couple of reasons. First of all, according to Tekkenstein, for 150 bucks, he's never seen better. The second thing is that after years and years of flying FPV, I've never used an HD signal before, so I'm really curious to see what that's gonna feel like. One thing to keep in mind as you're doing this is that most HD systems that are available today have some small degree of latency in them. So make sure you've got a spotter to help you avoid obstacles and don't do any crazy close proximity flying because you're going to be on top of things before you realize it. Now let's go flying. The overall visual effect is like watching a movie in a movie theater. The screen appears very big in front of you and yet very, very crisp. There's absolutely no interference whatsoever, which of course you grow accustomed to when you're uh, flying FPV. And the image is just so clear. As Tekkenstein described in the lab, there does appear to be a bit of an overscan issue which partially clips some of the flight instruments off the screen, so that's something to be aware of. But overall, wow. So apart from the visceral thrill of flying like this, I think there could be some very useful real-world applications for these goggles, because it is so much easier to see the aircraft's output on these than it is trying to look down at the iPad in full sunlight. I could see this being especially useful if you were a two-man operation where one guy is flying the aircraft eyes on and the other is using a second remote to control the camera. So that was our look at the Eashin Goggles 1 provided for us by Banggood. Hope you're watching. See you next time. All right. Fly safe. So that was our look at the Eashin Goggles 1, provided for us by whatever their name is. That Chinese company. That Chinese, Chinese company. Stuff. Ready? Ready. <laughs> <laughs>